That's right ladies, it's time for another sexy settings video for the Oculus Quest 3 using the link cable. And if you want to use the same link cable, a link to the link cable is in the description. This does do charging whilst you're playing so you can play forever until you die of old age. In this video, what I'm going to do is I am going to go through a Seto Corsa graphic settings that I've got working to be really nice with my system whilst using the link cable and we're also going to talk about quickly the settings on the oculus headset the resolution the frame rate and i'm going to very quickly go through the oculus debug tool settings though if you want more of an in-depth description about those and also an in-depth description of using the link cable check our previous video where we went through the base link cable settings so this video is mostly or pretty much entirely for attractive ladies and people that want to set up a Seto Corsa that maybe have a similar system to mine, system specs in the description or underneath the video. My graphics card is a 3080 Ti, I believe. If it isn't, I'll update that on the screen somewhere. And my chip is a two year old AMD X5 703D. Just ignore what I just said there. I put a, the actual spec in the description. I can't remember numbers, my brain can't deal with it. So, the key things to be aware of when using the link cable, which I actually find looks amazing, is fantastic for sim racing. The Quest 3 actually is fantastic, looks great. Key things to be aware of. First of all, let's start off with the headset resolution settings. And let me just quickly tell you how that affects performance. So if you go into your headset settings with the, for the link cable, I find you really want to be running at 90 hertz because it looks super duper smooth. And especially if you're doing faster racing, F2004, or you know, you want it to be really smooth. It, uh, trust me, 90 hertz is even better than 80. Um, go for 90 hertz if you can. You might be fine with 80. You might be fine with 72. If you do Satoku or you do mod tracks that are mental, or you've got a slower PC, okay, you're going to have to go on a lower frame rate. Uh, that will allow you to actually get a smooth image for your slower com potato computer. But generally, try and go for 90 hertz. Another crucial thing I've found is that from a lot of testing running at 4864 by 2592 resolution which is slightly over the default resolution which is the actual native resolution of the headset is 4128 by 2208 um running at the this higher uh resolution of 4864 by 2592 you get a really good clear quality image it looks bloody good um and that's the sort of cutoff point where, yeah, it will look even better if you move it to the right. But uh, this is where you get the best bang for buck I found with my system in terms of clarity to performance. Though, um, weirdly, through through my testing, I found that actually you can sometimes whack it up even higher with not too much of an impact. And some people, you might want to go for lower frame rate and higher resolution or a uh, the other way around. But anyway, those are the basic graphic settings that i settled on after 20 hours of messing around you'll know if you watch the live streams subscribe and click the like button and all that stuff if you want to watch live streams with us when you can suffer with me when we go through all these settings so the next thing to quickly go through as i say we've already done this in another video but i'm doing this in this one because i know you guys are too lazy to search and click on stuff the next thing to be aware of is the oculus debug tool which by default has absolutely crap settings on it and um you'll want to change this to get it to look decent i think the reason why a lot of people think the link cable's not that good when they first try it is because these settings are crap there's some main things on here to be really aware of when it comes to quality and uh, getting it to run smooth and those are there's a lot of sense on there. i'm not going to go too deep into this watch the other video or watch other videos uh the main things to make sure you've got set is let's find it let's not get lost here um the pc asynchronous space warp you want to have on disabled because when it goes from non-space warp to space warp you get a judder and a stutter and it's very annoying and very noticeable you want to make sure that the video codec is on h264 because it works perfectly fine you could try 265 but h264 you give that just this works so you can do this <laughs> um you want to make sure that dynamic bitrate is disabled. Uh, it's on by default and it's terrible <laughs> with it on. When you drive around uh, tracks with lots of trees or it rains, you'll see the image goes to crap, generally speaking. 
uh, just dynamic bit rate on disabled um, and you want to then put encode bit rate on 900 now you can't type 900 in here you'll have to type it in a browser somewhere or on a window and then copy and paste 900 I have found that anything above sort of 500 is fine you won't notice any difference you might as well stick it to 900 because we didn't notice any performance impact running this at 900 over 500 or lower and you're using a cable uh, 900 megabits per second I think is around give or take 100 megabytes per second not quite but so the USB-C cable can handle that nice and easy and that's enough bit rate at 90 Hertz with those resolutions to look great and it will look really nice and sharp and fantastic lastly or almost lastly link sharpening is really important if if you have it disabled which I think it is by default it will look really blurry <laughs> even at those higher resolutions it'll look really blurry you don't want that uh unless your eyes are terrible in which case you might not notice but put it on normal and that is basically just sharpens the image up now what you will find if you put it on normal you will need to use uh anti-aliasing in your software to smooth out some of the jaggers that you get from this sharpening what you'll also find is that if you use open xr you might want to use open xr sharpening instead of the link sharpening in which case you could disable it and if maybe you're playing iRacing, uh, why would you do that when you've got a set of Corsa? Well, again, iRacing has its own sharpening filter built into the game that you might prefer. But as a general thing, setting this to normal with a set of Corsa, I found normal looks fantastic. If you're running lower anti-aliasing and you're happy with it being a bit more blurry, you could just put it on quality. Uh, but it just it won't look as punchy. I found normal to me is great. Now, worth mentioning. You've got visible HUD here. You can set this to performance and performance summary. Select that. And if you want, if you want to then see where you're getting frame drops, or if there's drops from the headset side, you can see that in the performance HUD. Though it's really big, really obnoxious. You only really want to use that for diagnostics. So you probably don't want that on at all. Also worth noting, if you do want it on, when you've set this up and closed it and opened it again, it will say performance there. And you'll be like, well, there's no HUD there. What you have to do is each time you load this up, you have to like select one option, then go back to the option. Otherwise, it won't display. But to be honest, you don't really need to use that anyway. In Assetto Corsa, you're much better off using uh, Content Manager's uh, graphical stats. And then you can see if you're hitting the frame rate or not. So that is the Oculus Debug tool, which has a huge impact on the quality for Assetto Corsa in VR. I'm not saying that what those settings are the best settings, but they work really well from my testing so far you will find some of these settings not the what not these main settings down here uh, or space warp uh, but some of the settings will reset when you close and reopen this and it doesn't seem to do it every single time i don't know what that's about <laughs> but um you can always load this up and reset the settings that have changed if you notice a difference and uh, you can also write a batch file so that you can run that and it will be all the settings you've got set so you don't have to click them all but i found that the main settings have actually stayed the same it's just stuff like fov tangent multiplier and uh, other stuff which you can google and look into that for explanations of that um those sometimes reset when you change session but there you go oculus debug tool quest settings you now have a nice sharp image on your quest 3 if you want a more in-depth video about that, go and check out our previous video where I go into it a bit more detailed. Now, in Assetto Corsa, for the spec of computer I've got, uh, this is what I've uh, settled on uh, for the actual visual quality uh, for, for VR with a 3080. I am using OpenVR rather than Oculus. The Initially, I used the Oculus Rift uh, just used Oculus Rift as the uh, rendering method and it actually worked perfectly fine. The reason I'm now using OpenVR is that OpenVR has the ability to um, adjust um, f like a fixed foveated rendering so you can get even more performance out of it and it's got more options. Watch a video on how to set up OpenVR and OpenXR if you want to go into more detail of that. I don't want this video to be half an hour. Um, as I say, this would all work with just using Oculus Rift, but I'm using OpenVR for the reasons I've just explained. Uh, resolution, obviously this pertains to your computer monitor, not your VR headset. Um, I don't, when in VR, I turn full screen off because it means that I can alt-tab and move windows around in windows, windows in windows. <laughs> so I turn full screen off. You could run this at whatever, whatever you want. Uh, but a nice thing is, 
if you do run it full screen, uh, if you're doing a, a, a capture using Oculus Mirror, if you run it windowed, or, or if you're not actually, you're doing a capture with the mirror, Oculus Mirror or the game mirror, you can uh, do some interesting settings to make capturing video footage nice by having this as a full screen or high resolution image. I'll talk about that in a bit a bit later. But this resolution, as I say, is a screen resolution, not your headset resolution. Obviously, you pick the screen that you want it to display this on by default, what it loads to. Um, Anti-aliasing. So, anti-aliasing has a big impact on performance with a Seto Corsa. Probably one of the biggest impacts. 8x is arguably a bit overkill, but a Seto Corsa unfortunately doesn't have the best anti-aliasing or tends to have a lot of aliasing. I found in iRacing, for example, I can run like 2x or 4x AA. Doesn't actually have a huge impact on performance, a moderate impact, but not huge. But 4x AA is equivalent to 8x uh, AA in in AC. Um, so 4x you will get a lot of uh, shimmering. Um, it doesn't look totally smooth, but 8x will look beautiful almost almost perfect but not quite but it'll look absolutely gorgeous so if you can uh, i found i can in most situations do 8x aa uh if you can it's well worth it if not you drop it down to four and you'll you'll get a bit of shimmer and stuff but uh i really liked the 8x i thought it's really worth it for the clarity and quality and lack of shimmer uh, in vr um anastrophic filtering you could just set that to 16 since like the geforce 1080 ti um you is free basically <laughs> like great i don't know why this is even an option anymore they should, it should just be 16 on everything because it doesn't really do take any detail uh, demand um world details uh, has quite a big impact on frame rate in assetto corsa um i found that um high is a really good setting with with my spec system it will depend on the track that you're running as to how much world detail affects the performance i found in particular um but high is it looks really fantastic it seems to i seem to be able to hit 90 hertz with those previous oculus settings with my system uh it, you might want to move through these uh it, again to get more performance you know if you're really struggling turn the aa down turn turn world detail to to like low and then move upwards gradually um shadow resolution I found in VR that if you go below 512, it, the shadows look pretty bad, especially the cockpit shadows. So you're much better off running. I think 512 I would describe as a minimum. I You do notice a bit of performance impact from shadows, but I think with the 3080 and uh, even faster graphics cards, shadows, especially in older games, seem to be handled quite well. So uh, 512 by 512 I found works perfectly fine, looks nice and runs well. Um, I will say, inside of the game on the toolbar on the right you can there's a graphic settings app in a seto corsa and shadow resolution is one of the settings you can change in real time whilst you're in the game a uh, world detail uh and some of the other settings you can change but they won't change in real time so you can do whatever you want with this and then change it in game and see if it affects performance that's a good tip and nice to know smoke generation i'd set that to low smoke definitely especially with the shader patch and pure um can have an impact on um performance so uh, i set that to low and it looks fine anyway i've not really fiddled around with that so i can't tell you how much it affects things but historically smoke actually uh, can can affect things quite a lot uh reflections um can be a big impact on performance i think with higher graphics card less less so but um if you're really struggling for performance turn reflections off in ac can have quite a, a boost I found put it on 512 by 512 looks great and I'm running it on one face per frame when I've like gone back and forth I didn't notice too much difference between having it on two faces per frame or one face per frame um, these are the kind of things you probably want to check on your system these are just the settings that we settled on because they end up working and it look nice uh, but definitely turning reflections off entirely does get you quite a performance boost in my experience with the Seto Corsa now in terms of post-processing as I say, and I probably should have said earlier, I am using uh, the latest shader patch. Well, probably it's like a month old shader patch and a month or so old version of Pure. Uh, so I would recommend getting them from their Patreons. You could sign up for a pound and then close your account and get, you know, it's the two pounds and you've got 
all the weather and everything else so it's worth doing that um when you choose your post processing uh select pure vr um now i was using pure candy i think it was or one of the other pure filters when i was first doing this and it actually ran perfectly fine uh but uh other people have reported that using the vr setting apparently you get better performance so i'm using it i did i t personally i didn't really notice because it was running at a good frame rate anyway regardless but uh yeah you might as well use pure vr maybe it's set up better I've, i can't tell you for sure because i've not tested the frame rate uh directly to know for sure uh worth noting when you're playing in vr you can't flick through filters unfortunately inside of the game or it didn't i didn't think i don't think you can i, I couldn't get it to do that uh, i couldn't get the filter option the post processing option in game when i was in vr so i don't think that's available so you need to select it from this menu overall quality i've set it to medium you could set it up set it down it seemed to work fine on medium for me um and then i've turned i'm going to turn some rays off <laughs> uh FXAA off, sun rays off, heat shimmering off. A lot of these types of effects can look really uh, bad in VR um, because you can get mismatched from each eye and just they can look a bit weird. You might want to experiment yourself, but I tend to just have them turned off. I find them distracting. Uh, mirrors, mirror resolution, you can uh, turn down. I've got mine on 256. You could probably put it on 128 by 512. It'd probably look all right. Um, depends how much you like to look in your mirrors mirrors do look amazing in vr and much better than using the virtual mirror so sometimes having it a bit nice quality when you look especially when you're making moves um it can be worth turning it up but mirrors can be quite a performance hog so again if you're having a lot of performance issues mirrors uh turning them down could be a really good option for you maybe just using the virtual mirror and not the side mirrors or vice versa so uh that are that's the main settings for a set of course and now let's go to shader patch and uh general patch settings um i have not changed a lot of the the main settings that are in shader patch uh, i think the defaults are pretty fine i think what i can do is save my presets and also put them in the description and then you might be able to load them up I'll try that. I don't know if it works, but if it works, I'll stick it under the video and <laughs> maybe you could just load these settings. It probably cause a computer to smell of tea bags. I don't know. Uh, but there are some good things to be aware of for VR with the shader patch settings. Uh, a big one for performance is grass effects. Uh, turning that to low, it still looks absolutely fantastic in VR. You could probably put it on very low. I've got it on low. It looks fantastic, but you might want to turn that off. Um, again if you're on if you're not using a quest 3 this is for quest 3 this video but if you're using lower resolution vr headsets you might just want to turn it off because you wouldn't notice the grass does look really nice on the quest 3 though so i have to have it on low it's all about grass grass and tea bags tea is almost a type of grass uh so i have to have it on low but that's quite a performance impact if you're having issues especially on, on some tracks more than others um there is a specific vr setting before we go to that though this setting is really important <laughs> trees in the track adjustment there's a setting called trees a to c dithering if this is ticked you will have like these little square holes in your trees and it looks terrible and in vr it looks even worse and i didn't know what it was for a long time um and then i found out it is this trees a to c dithering setting which we worked out instantly it didn't take two and a half hours of live streaming to try and find that but you want to turn this off i found especially in vr and think your trees will look a lot better especially the trees in the distance will look a lot better turn it off get it off get rid of it so now we have a specific tab here called mode tweaks vr so you set the extension to active and here's some actually useful information i'm full of useful information today set single pass stereo to active active then what you want to do is not use nvidia vrs or vrs rate or any of this stuff ignore all that now what nvidia vrs is, is variable rate shading and uh, what this does is it divides the screen up into a high resolution low and super low resolution basically like foveated rendering static foveated rendering is what i've been calling it people seem to use different names 
Um, you, it, it works. You can use it, but it'll look terrible on the headset. And you're much better off not using the shader patch one, but using the Open XR um, fixed foveated rendering or variable rate shading, and setting it up using. Um, as I say, Open XR's version implementation of it in Open XR. So just don't use this shader patch one. You, I mean, you could do if you set it up perfectly, but it's hard to adjust, and um, it's just it it's actually works fine with it off. And if you're going to go into it, use the Open XR. Trust, trust me. That's what I've done. That's what I found worked better. And this implementation, I think, is a, not as good or as controllable. It seems that way. So I turn that that off, and we've just got this single pass stereo set to active. Um, other VR stuff uh, that's useful to know is this stabilization for custom VR mirroring. So the game Mirror by default has no stabilization on it, and when obviously if you're vid if you're recording the screen or you're just looking at the screen. It will be picking up all the head motion for people watching the screen. They'll see, oh, <laughs> you know, it looks like uh, it looks like you're going over rumble strips. Um, so if you put this VR stabilization setting on, it means that the mirror of the game is all smoothed out and will look nice, especially if you're recording videos of the game. Uh, and then you can adjust the settings here to uh, change how that smoothing is applied to the to the output. And that works really great, to be honest. Now, uh, there might be a performance impact for doing this, so you might want to turn that off. If, it, if you're having performance issues, it could be something free to turn off. And also, uh, you might rather want to use uh, the Oculus Mirror instead of, instead of this for, for, see, for seeing and recording the game. Uh, the Oculus Mirror might be better. Um, this is higher resolution. But the Oculus Mirror, which you can set to 1080p at least, has better stabilization on it. However, if you use the Oculus Mirror, you have to move the uh, you'll have to move the game to a different monitor, or or vice versa. Like the the obviously you still need to use the game mirror to actually use the interface and use a mouse on the screen. Uh, so the Oculus Mirror will have to go on a different monitor. So this is a good solution for a lot of people, needless to say, and it does look sharper than the Oculus Mirror. Uh, and yeah, you can adjust you can adjust how much the view is cropped in, um, and that stops shimmering at the edges for the way it does the uh, smoothing. Uh, and you can also adjust how aggressive the stabilization is. Um, but that that is m pretty much the main settings. So these are the main performance settings in AC. And I found with my spec system, specs underneath the video because I'm too thick to remember off the top of my head. With my spec system, in most cases, we were hitting 90 hertz. We, we tested this with 20 AI um, going around spa, day, night, um, and, and we were hitting 90 constantly. AI is a good way to test. I found when we did Satoku cru Cruising, <laughs> Shotoko, Shotoko, I'm stupid. When we do that, uh, I did need to turn the frame rate down, especially on some servers, to just get the performance. Um, and also turning the resolution down helped in those scenarios. And some weather settings that I was using, uh, sometimes we'd drop more frames uh, when we had we like 20 AI again. But the settings that we've got here and what we dialed in here for my system basically meant with the 3080 uh, in day normal sprint racing scenario. Uh, you just get 98, 90 hertz all the time. Very occasional drops around some corners, you know. But uh, yeah, it seemed, it seemed to work really well. The, we've only done two days, probably like 20 hours of testing. We will do more LFM races and see how that impacts things. Sometimes certain apps that you might have in-game can per affect performance, so you might have to use lower settings. And sometimes some mod cars, and this is actually one of the bigger problems I had in AC for performance, certain cars are much higher resolution models and ac is not that good at um uh getting performance with very uh, like the lod and the way it handles cars is not as optimized as some other sims so uh certain mods with a lot of cars that impacts performance so again you'll have to lower either your frame rate your resolution or quality 
if you're driving if, if you know you're gonna be doing a particularly heavy mod but the, the cars i tested we did the the mercer which is quite a detailed car uh the porsche rsr the f2004 um i think that was it really in terms of what we tested I jumped, jumped some random servers and it worked pretty well so these aren't perfect settings but at worst this bloody hell it's 25 minutes i tried my best <laughs> at worst this has given you a general framework and a general explanation of what the settings do and pertinent settings so it's probably saved you yeah this is 25 minutes of your life you'll never get back um but this could have saved you hours so you know if it was useful let me know in the comments section uh write a letter to your local government complaining about what i've done and how i've wasted your life but uh, other than that thanks for watching happy tea drinking take care and uh happy vr driving because it's bloody good goodbye guys